Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday to everyone. How are you on today? Starting off the week, um, ex Thanksgiving week, as it's really probably called, <laughs> Thanksgiving week. So, to some people that celebrate it, that's what it's called. It's Thanksgiving week. And a lot of people have a short week, and some people are going to work their regular hours. But I want to highlight a story that seems to be very positive. And, you know, a lot of times we don't come, uh, we don't talk about positive stories. And if we talk about those stories, we, we always bring in other things, you know, that can become traumatic or negative or highlighting or comparing or critiquing. So in this particular story though, I, I'm into sports and I love basketball. I love football, but, uh, and running track and field, but basketball is one of my key things that I did in high school with running track, but I dabbled in a lot of other sports like soccer, uh, you know, volleyball, you know, those things like that. But anyway, nevertheless, this is a young man. He's 17 years old. He's out of Georgia. And I believe it's Marietta, but he's out of Georgia. And should he be in high school? But the title says he should be in high school. Instead, he's in the G League and he's the future. And this is an article, a story coming from Sports Illustrated. Now, this young man has already did what he needed to do actually to complete school. And so we're going to talk about this story here uh, because it is a positive story. It, it actually is a positive story. And he is a top prospect and his name is Scoot Henderson. Scoot Henderson, they call him Scoot uh, Henderson, who signed a two-year, one million deal with the Ignite, is ushering in a new era. Now, this is a new league. This is a new league, and uh, let me get to this because, there we go, get over this part about, this black part here that they're interfering in me talking about this story. But anyway, this is a new league, uh, and if you remember back then, there was a lot of um, undercover things going on and monopoly money and things like that, but now they have this new league, which is legal. And so Scoot Henderson has visions of NBA greatness, of all-star games and MVP trophies and all the glory that comes with it. And he has a chorus of fervent believers cheering him on. And, and some people come out and they say like the Celtics star Jalen Brown says he's the best 17-year-old that he's ever seen. And then young Derrick Rose says Jason Hart, Scott's, uh, Scoot's coach, a protege. He plays like a young Derrick Rose. And then you have uh, NBA trainer, former NBA sharpshooter Chuck Person says a generational player. Shaquille O'Neal sends regular texts of encouragement. Russell Westbrook has reached out. Stardom's beckons. It's just going to be a while before the protege can meet the hype, at least on an NBA stage. Now, this young cat it has made the front page of Sports Illustrated. Scoot Henderson is just the beginning. The 17-year-old Henderson is only starting his professional journey as part of the G League Ignite, the NBA's new talent incubator for players under 19, those not yet eligible for the draft. The 6'3", 189-pound guard is a pioneer of sorts, one of the youngest hoop Femmons ever to turn professional in the U.S. and the first to make a two-year commitment to the Ignite. He signed his one million contract in May after his junior year of high school and he's projected to be the top point guard in the 2023 draft, which I'm looking forward to that. But Scoot's not thinking about any of that right now. Today on this late September afternoon, and that was in September when he was, you know, this was back in September. When, uh, and this article, actually, let me give you the date on this article because I just came across this article November 18th. But they interviewed him, so I just wanted to make that a little clear there. So today on this late September afternoon, all he wants in his league assignment apartment near the Ignite's training facility in Walnut Creek 
California is some decent art. <laughs> the fully furnished place has drab white walls, neutral colored furniture, and framed watercolors that look like they should be hanging in a dentist's office. This is whack, he says, gesturing at the framed pieces. Henderson's favors a bolder look, more inspiring. Some crazy artwork and cool words on the walls, like he has in his childhood bedroom in Marietta, Georgia. Some family photos. Definitely some paint. I like the color red, he says. Might get like a red dresser or something, if they let me have that stuff. But just a whole bunch of posters, really, to make it more soothing, to make it more creative. I'm with you on that, Scoop. I like fashion. I like colors. I like artwork. I like a lot of things like that. So we good on that. I like that. <laughs> when you're 17 and 2,500 miles from home, far from your parents and grandparents and the six basketball playing siblings who helped shape you, you do whatever you can to ease the transition. So sure, some posters would be nice, but much better is that CJ, his best friend and the younger of his two older brothers will arrive in a few days to be his roommate and driver since Scoop doesn't have his license. His mother, Crystal, and one of his four sisters, Onyx, are also moving west to manage his daily affairs and live in a house just up the street in the ritzy suburb east of Oakland. You know, that's really good that the family is able to do that and the mother is moving there. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're sending your children off somewhere and they're underage, minor children, and he is underage, he's 17, it is good for family members, responsible family members, and including a parent to be able to be with him, to help, to help him manage his daily affairs, to make sure he's good, to make sure he's okay, to make sure he's not going to be taken advantage of and get in situations that they're too far to even know about or to get involved with. And so that is so important to see that happen. And then he has an older sibling that's going to move and be his roommate and, uh, you know, help be there for him, take him where he needs to go. Those are things that are really good that this young man has support. And that's why I wanted to highlight this story because it seems like a very positive story and a close-knit family. This is a black family, you all, since I didn't mention that at first. It's a black family, but a close-knit family to help him manage his affairs as a young cat, a young man that's, uh, you know, that's entered a G League, the Elite, elite League, to play basketball. And I seen a video. This guy is, he's sharp. He's sharp. He's tall, slim. The guy is sharp. He's way up in the air. And I, I love basketball. And I'm like looking forward to seeing him really play. And, and I really, truly just reading this story inspired me. To, there's a lot of, uh, you know, talent out there and it has to be done the right way. And to make sure that family is involved. We can't put our trust in systems and in other people and think that, you know, and then come back later and start blaming because we, we weren't involved. We didn't take the time to get to be involved and see to things that were going well with their children and everything was going the right way. So this is good news that we can hear a good story like this is positive. So I wanted to come out and highlight this story. So anyway, just seeing them every day, it'll make him happier, Scoop says. It'll calm me down. See, he's, he's, he's family-oriented. He's be used to being around family that a lot of support. And it says it's a long way from Kale High. And this is where he went to Kale High where Scoot could be studying for an English test right now instead of figuring out where to shop for groceries. <laughs> so he has to shop for groceries. <laughs> Having dominated high school competition, he knew a year ago that he would leave early. The only question was where to take his talents. College, top schools like Kansas, Georgia, and Auburn were recruiting him. Overseas, he had already turned down a lucrative offer in China as a sophomore. Overtime elite. The fledgling league with seed money from Jeff Bezos and Drake made an offer too. Ultimately, Scoop chose the expertise and infrastructure of the Ignite. He will be playing alongside five other high school sensations, all a grade ahead. Mar uh, Marjan Bochamp, Dyson J Daniels, Michael Foster, Jaden Hardy, and Fan Bozine, as well as a half dozen teammates in their 20s and 30s who will serve as mentors. 
There has never been so many attractive options for basketball protégés, especially now that college players have the ability to earn endorsement money from their names, images, and likenesses. For, for the first time since the NBA slammed the door shut on high schoolers back in 2006, you remember that if you follow sports, then that was, you know, something that happened back then, and it's the players and their families who hold more leverage now, which is good news because the family, like I said, are now involved in that they have more leverage and, and you know, and more input and say so, you know, now says Christian Dawkins, the former player agent who was convicted in an NCAA double, excuse me, an NCA, uh, NCAA bribery scandal two years ago and is now the founder and chairman of Parlay Sports and Entertainment, the agency working with the Henderson. Now, I remember this story, and maybe if you're following sports, you will remember this story where uh, Christian Dawkins was convicted in an NCAA bribery scandal. And I remember that, and I forgot who the players were in it, involved in that thing, but I do remember that he was convicted. But Daw uh, Dawkins worked in a broken system where money was shunted under the table to players, which it was. It was shunted under the table to players. You're not supposed to do that and bribe, uh, bribe and, you know, these young players, and that's what happened. Now, bidding wars can play out far more in the open as leagues and universities vie for top prospects. So hopefully this guy, Christian Dawkins, is up on the up and up, and he can do, you know, what he does, uh, you know, in a more open system because that's what they're saying. It's a more open system with this now. And that's good that, you know, um, we never want to do things wrong anyway and get caught up. And sometimes people get caught up. They make mistakes, you know, and hopefully you learn from those mistakes that you never want to get caught up again in those type of mistakes. And so it'll be the most aggressive arms race for talent that the business seen in a long time. Dawkins says Scoot Henderson is just the beginning. This cat, I'm going to leave this for you, this article in the comments, and you can comment below if you're into sports. I hope people that come to my channel that are into sports, well, this cat, is uh, he's, he's off the chain here, and people are like stopping to watch <laughs> like that. But anyway, he's already impressed. Uh, been, already impressed Ignite practices with his absurd jumping ability. <laughs> he is up there, you guys. He's His absurd jumping ability, like he is getting ready to dunk this ball right now. And um, NBA ready physique and work ethic modeled on Kobe Bryant. The aroma of bacon wafts through the kitchen on a pleasant July morning in Marietta two months before Scoot will move to California. But the sizzling on the stove is quickly drowned out by a crackling debate in the next room over a local seventh grader's basketball chops. He'll burst your... Someone yells, a proclamation met with howls. Every inch of cush, uh, every inch of couch cushion in the modest living room is filled by Henderson and a few family friends. ESPN is blaring from the television. It's always a sports disagreement in the morning, says Onyx23, who lives a few miles away, but like all her siblings, gravitates back to the family home on a woodsy cul-de-sac. It's always shouting, but two seconds later, it's like, okay, what are we eating? <laughs> and then after things settle down a little bit, we probably go to the gym. The gym is next plate 360 degree, which everyone in the family calls their second home. Crystal, a healthcare administrator, and Chris, a coach and trainer, acquired the space with his two courts in 2018, fulfilling a lifelong dream of Chris's. He'd grown up in difficult circumstances, wishing he'd had access to this type of haven. Haven. They launched a series of camps and tournaments for kids along with a STEM lab, says Crystal. We just want to continue to help them realize they can do anything that they want in this world and then open up their eyes to STEM. In this family, basketball really is life. The three Henderson sisters played Division I basketball, Diamond 29 at Syracuse, and Onyx and China 26 at Cal State Fullerton. CJ 20 played at Cal High until he suffered a knee injury. Their younger sister, 16-year-old Crystal, who goes by Moochie, is a point guard and one of the top-ranked preps in Georgia. The oldest brother, Jay, 28, preferred football, but can hold his own in family pickup games. Chris has coached them all since they were toddlers, dunking on plastic hoops and continues to train them at next play 360 degree. Crystal runs the gym, and all of the Hendersons can be found there nearly every day.
scoot sometimes until 2 a.m. before his move, his move west. Those in Scoot's orbits describe him the same way, serious, reserved, hyper-focused, mature beyond his years, but a kid at heart, a sensitive soul. When his sisters went away to college, Scoot would call them almost daily to check in. He's also the Henderson most likely to scream through a horror movie. On the court, though, is a different story. He might start off kind of cool, you know, says Diamond, but then the monster just comes out and he can't contain it. It's like the Hulk, sweetest guy, he's so humble, and then he gets on the court and you just see this green monster, and then he's flying in the air, dunking it as hard as he can, hanging on the rim, just dunking it and hanging on that rim, man, okay? Nearly all the Henderson siblings say they grew up as Kobe Bryant fans, including Scoot, who has a purple number 24 Lakers jersey hanging in his bedroom. Scoot seems to channel his hoops hero when he talks about his own work ethic. The grind is just special. You can't enjoy the end success. You got to enjoy the grind so you can get to that success. This is a man, young man, with some wisdom right here, some words of wisdom. And that is so true. You cannot, cannot get to success without enjoying the grind. That's just like when we say you can't, you can't, you got to be able to enjoy the journey to get to your destination. We speak on that a lot in, in biblical terms, you know, and, and when we're talking in Bible study lessons, you have got to be able to enjoy the journey. You have to appreciate the journey to get to your destination. And this young man says you can't enjoy the end success, man. You got to enjoy the grind so you can get that success. And that's very true. Some people don't want to enjoy the grind. They don't want to work hard. They just want instant success. And if you see some people out there killing up one another because they just want instant money and success, but they're not willing to work hard to get to that success, the end success, the outcome. You know, they don't want to work hard. They just want it given to them on a platter or they'll kill someone and take what somebody else has and they haven't worked hard, hasn't earned it. They don't want that. They just want the success, but they don't want to grind. See, in order to be successful and to maintain success, you have got to enjoy the journey, but you got to enjoy the grind and you got to work hard. And sometimes you got to get down and dirty and it's not always easy on that journey. It's not always easy grinding. But when you can enjoy the grind and get through the trials and tribulations of the grind and the journey, because you know that success is on the way, you're going to get there if you keep going and if you put God in it. And this sounds like a well-rounded, grounded young man. And I pray that he stays that way and humble and with his family support, man. He was born Sterling Henderson, but just about everyone has called him either Scoot or Scooter since he was a toddler. Now, the roots of that moniker are, are the subject of a family debate because some of his siblings said he used to scoot across the floor on his rear. But Crystal, his younger sister, insists it's just a nickname. <laughs> so, but as the youngest, uh, second youngest of the H Henderson Seven, as Crystal calls them, Scoot took his basketball lumps early playing against his older siblings. You see that? He took his lumps early, man. <laughs> All seven of us will be out there to one, two o'clock in the morning, says Diamond. Going at it, crying, arguing, fighting. My dad would have to referee us a lot of times just so we didn't kill each other. And that's, that's what sports do. When my siblings and I used to get out there and run track, man. And then, you know, neighborhood kids and then my older brothers playing football and be mad, coming home mad and fussing, ready to fight because <laughs> something happened on the football field when they was out there uh, playing football. But the indoor activities were just as intense. Whether the siblings were playing un uh, Uno or Monopoly or just racing to the door, there are various scuff marks along the walls and moldings where the Hendersons have dunked on one another. Dunked. 
That used to happen in my household, trying, you know, and dunking and trying to play football in the house. My mom be like, stop, stop playing here. Go outside. <laughs> um, using a real ball, but an imaginary hoop, you know, a real ball, but a, 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 a imaginary hoop, man. Crystal, needless to say, was not amused. <laughs> you know, it's like, would you please stop? I understand that as a female you like, like if you got in the way, you'd be like, whoa, stop. You're going to run me over, okay? Um, but in a family of chatty souls, Scoot is the quietest. But as the quiet types often do, he was soaking up every lesson and adopting the best pieces of his siblings' game. So you have to be, you have to be um, careful of quiet people. And they're soaking up. They're listening. They're just sitting back, you know, just cool, you know, chilling, listening, soaking it up. And you think, yeah, they quiet. They don't say a lot. They don't talk a lot. See, they can show you better than they can tell you. That's the thing. <laughs> they can show you better than they can tell you, okay? And he meticulously lists them. China's jump shot, Diamond's fadeaway, CJ's hesitation move, Onyx footwork. He has even picked up some shooting techniques from Moochie, who Scoot says is the family's finest long-distance sniper. Okay, the best passer, me, Scoot says softly, sounding more matter of fact than boastful. Okay, when it's suggested he will eventually rank number one at all of the above, he says, hopefully, yes, humble young man, humble young man. And so when it was time to make the most consequential decision of his life, Scoot once again drew on the collective wisdom of his family. All nine of us, Crystal says. So he, they make of his primary support system, his family, which is good news. That That's good news. When you really want to see success like that in a family, you got a good support system. Man, that's, that's good news. So much, and that's the way you do things. That's the right way to do things. Instead of sending your children off somewhere and blaming everybody else and creating a chaos and a ruckus. You know what I'm saying? But being a part of your minor children's success or young adult children's success, but just being a part of that success, that good support system, so you can help manage affairs and be there to see what's going on. That is so important. So important, man. Helping to keep, you know, uh, keep your family member on track, you know, on track, on the right road, you know, and helping them along the way. You know, that's what cohesiveness is in a family pulling together. And that is so important that we need to see a lot more of that when it comes to family members, you know, and parents and siblings pulling together to help each other, to support one another. Man, this, this is a story. Like I said, I read this story and I definitely want to highlight this story. It's a little long, but I'm going to get to it because guess what? There's so many negative stories about black people out here and somewhere we got to find a medium. We got to find positive. And right now it's so much negative and it outweighs the positive. The scale is tilted. So we definitely need to highlight positive stories where families are doing the right thing by their children and families are doing the right thing by their siblings. It's very important. So it's a fabulous time to be a teenager with sick handles and major hops. The best since the NBA instituted a rule 15 years ago that players must be at least 19 years old and a year removed from high school to be draft eligible. The NBA's minor league, then known as the D-League, which did allow 18-year-olds, was in its infancy and paying very little. A smattering, of US a smattering of U.S. players went abroad to mix results. The NCAA held a virtual monopoly on the market for elite talent. But in 2019, the G League started offering select contracts worth $125,000 to a handful of high school stars. The next year, the NBA launched the Ignite, attracting stars like shooting guard Jalen Green and small forward Jonathan Kaminga with a far bigger haul, reportedly around $500,000 for each. Two months after Scoot struck his two-year deal with the Ignite, a 16-year-old big man from Oakland, Jalen Lewis, signed with Overtime Elite, reportedly for more than $1 million. The Atlanta-based OTE is offering players a minimum of $100,000 per season to play for one or three squads of teenagers. By next summer, a third option should be available, the Professional Collegiate League, which plans to start 
with four teams spread across the Mid-Atlantic and will pay $50,000 to $200,000 per session, plus scholarships to attend local schools. Add in professional leagues in China, Australia, and Europe, and you get what Dawkins calls a perfect storm. It's a battle Excuse me. It's a battle royal on a bigger scale now because you now because now you have everybody on a global level coming after teenagers, says Dawkins. The price will just continue to rise, which I think is a good thing for the players. Dawkins will advise the Henderson on marketing and business matters. His firm employs other certified agents who are handling Scoot's basketball contracts. He helped us understand the space a lot more. And what is to come, Crystal says, a lot of people don't want you to know. They don't want to empower you. If there are any doubts about the Ignite's viability for launching NBA careers, they were silenced in July when Green went number two to the Rockets and Kaminga went to the Warriors five picks later. That proof of concept will surely encourage other young femins, fem, femin, femins, excuse me, femins like Scoop to follow their path, drawn by the advantages of comp competing against teams with seasoned players in their 20s and 30s, working with NBA coaches and learning NBA sets and focusing on a basketball career without having to struggle schoolwork. Um, actually, yeah. Scouts attending Ignite Games last season told Chad Ford, who covers the draft by a substack after years as an ESPN guru that they found it easier to evaluate Green and Kaminga than the college prospects in the 2021 draft class. So if you shine in the G League, says Ford, I think the takeaway is that's a safer bet in the draft than someone who shines in the NCAA. AA. It will be 19 months before Scott can test that theory. And of course, much depends on how he'll perform over the next two seasons. It's difficult to say how far this will all go, how big the contracts will get, and how many teams will be signing them. But a future in which the top of the NBA draft board is dominated by Ignite, OTE, and PCL instead of Kentucky, Duke, and Gonzaga has all but arrived. Scoot Henderson represents the next stage of player empowerment. The protege who plots his own path free of NCAA strictures, and stakes his claim before ever stepping in the NBA. Now, that word was phenom. Sorry about that. It was phenom. Okay? Like phenomenal. Phenom. Okay? Back up there where I was reading and I was saying phenom is phenom. Okay? Um, <laughs> just get getting there. But, um, and it's good that he was able to bring family members out west with him. But his sneaker collection stayed at home in Georgia. <laughs> so Scoot's decision to leave the conference of high school, turn pro, and move across the continent unfolded the way many things do in the Henderson household. We throw out the options as a family, Crystal says, and then we do the pros and cons, and it's a lot of yelling and screaming and fussing and whatever. The deliberations went on for months, culminating last spring in a family meeting in the STEM lab, lab at Next Play 360 Degree, where Scoot made his decision over a takeout feast from Infusion Crab. The decision lasted just 10 minutes. Scoot knew exactly what he wanted and never wavered. The Ignite offered better competition than the NCAA. The G League offered more stability and a longer track record than OTE. It's one step closer to my main goal, getting to the NBA, he explains. That's really it. He had nothing to prove in high school. As a junior, he averaged 32 points. That's a lot of points for a, um, a high schooler. 32 points in a game is a lot. Seven rebounds and six assists and with the, was the state's class 6A player of the year. Scoot's closest friends, including CJ, had graduated in 2019. Sure, he would miss out on things like homecoming and the senior prom, but none of that mattered much to him. So last fall, last fall, Scoot doubled his academic workload in order to graduate a year early. See, that's, that's some determination and hard work and focus. He left with a 3.5 GPA. The G League requires a high school diploma. See, if you're about getting yours, 
you about working that grind. Because remember, you got to enjoy the grind before the end success. As he said, you got to enjoy the journey before you get to the destination. And so right here, right here, he doubled his academic workload in order to graduate a year early. That's what he did. And he had, a, he left with a 3.5 GPA. You see, that's the type of type of hard work and due diligence. If you're serious and you have family members, that good support system is not about just about the money. It's not about that. It's not just about somebody, you know, trying to get rich off of somebody else and trying to get money and a come up. You see what I'm saying? He doubled his academic workload in order to graduate a year early. No confusion, no scandals, no foolishness, not coming back after the fact, you know, oh, you know, with all this underage stuff, he did, he's doing what he has to do to be responsible, to get where he wants to go, okay, to that end success. You see what I'm saying? That success in, you know what I'm saying? So more than a dozen big time college programs put offers on the table. The allure of the NCAA is still potent. You've heard of March Madness. If you follow sports, you know, every year there's in, in March, there's March Madness. Everybody show up in Vegas. Okay. It's a big, huge event. Okay. National television exposure. That happens. The chance to be the BMOC, but that too held little appeal for school who will play in relative anonymity for the next two years. Okay. The Hendersons also knew well the pitfalls of the NCAA. Diamond, China, and Onyx all sustained career-altering knee injuries in college and felt as though they were treated as disposable commodities. My daughters got hurt, Crystal says, and there was nothing. See, that's another thing, too. You, you have to be careful, and I'm glad that they were able to really weigh the pros and cons of this because they do treat you as disposable commodities. I have a sibling that was going pro. He was really, really good. And this is a true story. And we, we were toted along to the football games when, you know, little league, tiny tot, little league. We was into all of that. He was running touchdowns. He was a running back at a young age. I mean, like six, seven years old running, uh, touchdowns. They could not stop him. And I'm keeping it real. And he hurt his knee in football. And they kept him playing and treated him as a disposable commodity, which busted up his knee, put staples in his knee, and he can never, he could never, he was out. He was out. The scouts were at that game. They had been coming, looking at him. I mean, my brother would have went pro as a running back. I'm not kidding you guys. And this is what I can relate to this a lot about the disposable commodities because they kept playing, playing him. He had to go to the hospital. Knee was big, big, big. They had to release the pressure staples in his knee that ended his football career. And there was nothing. I can truly relate to what this mother is saying. I can truly relate to that man. When you know that you're, you've worked hard. My, my, my sibling, he started as a, what, five, four or five years old? Five, I think it was five because you have to be, you know, I think it was five. Playing football, man. And every Sunday, we're at, at the games after church. Uh, during the week, we're, we're going to practice with him. Yelling on the sidelines on Sunday games. He running touchdowns up and down that field. But they do. They treat you as a disposable commodity. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing. But I, I've shared with you all, this particular sibling is my youngest, and he actually is a poet. He has a book out. Um, I always like to show his book, and I'll get back to that. But look, this is his book. So if you get a chance, it's called Spilled Blood Never Dries, A Poetic Journey Through the Mind of a Black Revolutionary. And he goes by Dre Guevara, his poet name, and is actually revolutionary Dre Guevara in his music. He has music out on YouTube. It's floating around on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, but he, and some other uh, 
uh, music <clears throat> links that I don't have. I can't remember, but he has music out there and I've shared it with some people already that, uh, you know, he's talking and it, it's stuff that it's not, uh, to kill people and all of that violence is to correct people and it's to, you know, try to turn people around. His music is through positiveness. He's also a photographer. He also has a, uh, a, a e-commerce site. So, you know, he's done a lot, you know, um, but he was rapping when he was younger, R rapping when he was younger, but the football was his thing and he ran track and, uh, good at track and all of us, you know, into sports, you know, and that's probably where I get it from. It's growing up in a household household with only brothers, no sisters and loving sports to this day. I still love sports, you know, um, it's just amazing, you know, to just get caught up in that. <laughs> but anyway, um, nevertheless, I can relate to what this parent is saying here. But all three got their degrees, but as the family saw it, there wasn't sufficient compensation for their physical sacrifice. The way the Hendersons think, not just with the NCAA, but just, but just in general, might be the reason why our alliance was able to come together smoothly, uh, Dawkins says. I think we're both mavericks or risk takers to a certain extent and have a strong viewpoint. The NCAA policy change that will allow athletes to profit from their names, images, and likenesses came about six weeks after Scoot signed with the Ignite. But it wouldn't have made a difference, he says, and the seven-figure contract. Scoot allows it was a factor, but so were the online college courses and life skills programs the Ignite provide. That's why I don't like when people say, just say, you just went for the money. And that's what I was, had mentioned earlier. It wasn't for the money or just for the money because they offered online college courses and life skills programs. And that's really good because the NCAA did not offer that back then. You realize that, but this program does. And that's good news because they can still take college courses and it teaches them life skills. There are programs to teach them life skills because they're so young. They do need mentoring and they do need programs to teach them life skills. And this is so important. So I'm glad he said, you know, it's like, you know, in my video yesterday during our, our, our Bible uh, discussion on healing the soul of a woman and I always include the man in that as well. But I talked about that, you know, in this book, uh, in chapter three, let me just pull this real quick because in chapter three, it, God wants the wounded right in chapter three, but right here, I want to read this again. This is on page 21. And if you have Joyce Meyer book, healing the soul of a woman, how to overcome your emotional wounds right here. I'm going to read this because I like what he says when he says, that's why I don't like when people just say, you just went for the money right here. The world is filled with people who judge what they know nothing about and attempt to educate people regarding what they have never experienced. That is a, I highlighted that and I invited other people that have the book to, in, to highlight that in their book because it's so true. I mean, it's not just for this story, but it relates to a lot of stuff that has went on the, you know, the incarceration of, uh, you know, of black men and just a lot of stuff they want to, uh, you know, judge, but they know nothing about it. So you come out, well, that, you just went for the money. That sounds like a hater to me. And it sounds like someone that's just envious and someone that's just speaking, judging, and don't know nothing about what they're talking about. Because when you, when, when, when he, he said he looked at that, the money, he looked at the seven figure contract, but what made a difference was the fact that they offer online college courses and life skills programs life skills programs. That's a good thing. But there are people that see a comment like that is somebody that don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. Trying to educate someone in a negative, you know, way by trying to throw some, you know, some dark subliminal shots and don't know what they're talking about. But anyway, as Diamond puts it, in the next few years, you can be a millionaire. Why wouldn't you go hard now? to be able to live the rest of your life the way you want to live and create generational wealth for yourself as well as your family. See, doing it the right way. The right way. 
the right way. And the road to stardom begins in a bland apartment complex overlooking a gas station across from a Target in an unfamiliar city. But at least he has a Target. And maybe that Target has a grocery store because a lot of the Targets now have grocery stores in them where he can go get the necessities that he needs, right? Scoot has been training with the Ignite for about a week, adjusting to his strange new reality. Onyx has settled up, settled, excuse me, Onyx has settled in up the road. But CJ and Crystal have not yet arrived. It's quiet here. I miss my family, Scoot says, and my mom's cooking, especially her macaroni and cheese. Though Scoot's low-carb diet might rule that out anyway. Well, Scoot, I say, just have a, just have a bowl every now and then. You know, a, a, just have a little every now and then, Scoot. <laughs> okay, but the Hendersons are navigating the same mix of excitement for Scoot and separation anxiety, with some living in Walnut Creek and the rest back in Marietta. But they all... They'll all be making regular treks to the Bay Area and to as many games as possible, both home and road. The team does not have an arena of its own, so will play its home games at Mandalay Bay's Arena in Las Vegas. When Scoot initially settled in, the whole family traveled for one week reunion at the new house. China, the family's resident fashion consultant and interior designer, planned to help Scoop personalize his new space. But at the moment, it's just Scoop and his empty apartment with the bad art. <laughs> On the plus side, there is no one else hogging the Wi-Fi, so his PS5 works seamlessly running NBA 2K, okay? The transition on the court is going well. Though he missed the Ignite's first three regular season games with a broken rib, Scoop returned to the lineup on Wednesday, registering eight points, six rebounds, and three assists in 16 minutes. He's already made a quick impression in camp on his teammates and on his coach, Hart, who played in the NBA for nine years, including two stints with the Spurs during the Tim Duncan era. I used to love Tim Duncan. Even though I've always been a Lakers fan, but I liked Tim Duncan when he played, man. I did. I liked Tim Duncan. Um, he was quiet like that, but the brother was a good player. But he was quiet, <laughs> you know. He was pretty cool, but he played the game, Tim Duncan. I'd give it to him. Shout out to Tim Duncan, man. But anyway, love the Lakers. That's going to always be my team, the Lakers and the Cowboys. So don't give my video a thumbs down just because you hate the Lakers or don't like them or the Cowboys. Still give us a up because we're not talking about who I, this ain't about what I like. It's about uh, showcasing a positive story for a minor Young black man that's 17, that's on the grind, that appreciates the grind to get to the end success. So that's what we need to look at, showcasing a positive story with a positive black family. That's what I'm showcasing. So give it a thumbs up and take your feelings out of it if you don't like the Cowboys or the Lakers, okay? So when he trains, you don't know he's 17, Hart says. Is almost like on some Kobe mindset, focused, driven. Focused, driven. <laughs> In practice, Scoot already looks the part of an NBA player. Lean and chiseled and explosive. I told you the guy, this young man is lean and chiseled, man. He's lean and he's like getting ready to dunk. Oh my God, you okay. Person, his trainer says he's seen Scoot pick up the ball off one dribble after crossing midcourt and fly in for the dunk. His jumper is a work in progress, though Parson, excuse me, though Person had scooped shooting and converting from 30 feet. He's going to be a Russell Westbrook with range, says Person. And I'm going to stop right there and share a story with you. Uh, earlier this year, I mean, I would say during the summer, it was during the summer. And I would always play, shoot some hoops after I get through with my run, my morning run, or my morning power walk. And man, I kept practicing that three-pointer over and over and over. Practicing that three-pointer. I started hitting them three-pointers, and I was so excited. And these young men would come to the court where I would, you know, practice my three-pointers. That's all I was really concerned about. Yeah, I did layups, you know. But this summer, I was practicing my three-pointers, right? And so um, I started hitting them. I was so excited. I'm not kidding you. And I said, I told the young men, 
uh, record this so I can <laughs> show, so I, they won't think I'm making it up, you know. But I was hitting them three-pointers. I mean, I was hitting them left and right, man, them three-pointers. And I was so excited that I was hitting three-pointers. You know, that was just good news for me, man. I love sports, like I said, but I was hitting them three-pointers. I was, like, hitting them, and I was practicing out there. Practice. Even my free throws got better. The free throws, I was just like, shoot, shoot. Shoot like just like three point three peaks, right? You know, like just just my my free throws got better, but my three pointers was my major goal was to hit some three pointers. Man, I, I was I was good. I was good. I was good. Okay, the Celtic Browns, another Marietta product, has become a friend and a mentor. He has also scrimmaged against Scoot, coming away with this conclusion: no back down, no quit, relentless, which I love. The Bay Area might prove hazardous for the average teenager with time on his hands and money to blow, but Scoot seems wholly uninterested in anything that doesn't involve a basketball. He spends his free time either on the PS5 or reading, reading, and just finished a self-help book called The Four Agreements. His favorite lesson, be impeccable with your word. See, you know what? Reading every day brings knowledge. You know that, right? Just read every day. And just finished a self-help book called The Four Agreements. His favorite lesson, be impeccable with your word. So I'm going to look this book up, you guys. I haven't looked it up, but uh, let's see. It's called The Four Agreements, and I'm going to pull that up now. It's not a real... Uh, expensive book spirituality self-help and personal growth is what it's about and it's uh, the author is Don Miguel Reese if you want to check it out you can get it on Amazon it's not very expensive Target has it matter of fact five below five dollars five below has it the store five below Amazon and Target at five dollars and seventy seven cent or you can get it used so uh, it's there, though, Five Below, if you have a Five Below store in your area. It's a practical guide to personal freedom. And um, let's see. It's uh, Arthur Don Miguel Reese with Janet Mills uh, and series Toltec Wisdom. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I could... Uh, Let's see if I can get the ISBN number in case you're interested in it, the four agreements. Um, it's 140 pages. Let's see if um, Amazon offers the ISBN number on it. I think you can get it on audio also. You know, it's not really giving it to me, but um, you can check it out, like I said, on Amazon, Target, uh, Five Below, they sell it also, but let's get back because this and get back to what we were talking about. But that's the book, and it says Scoot also records at getting a driver's license that chairs rite of passage, saying with a joyful crackle, a joyful cackle, "I want to stay young forever." Anyway, if he decides to explore his new surroundings, he says, "I'll take the bus." Uh, with the season underway, new normalcy will follow. He'll have C.J. Crystal and Onyx nearby. And the rest of the Henderson 7 will descend on every Ignite game possible, making the Rockers present felt. Whatever Scoot becomes over these next two seasons, he will carry an entire family's hopes and dreams with him. It's going to be a challenge, Crystal says of this strange two-year interlude, but I think we're close enough to make it work. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. This is generationally changing. The storyline that can come from this is well worth just grinding it out so i want to leave you with this man you got to work hard you got to enjoy the grind 
in order to get to the end success. Whatever your desired outcome is, you got to work hard to get there. And so what I'll do is I'll put this, um, I'll put it in the comments for you um, so that you can actually, if you want to read this video, uh, read this article, excuse me, for yourself, you're more than willing to. Um, I thank you all for tuning in, but please put your comments below because this is so good. And please finish the video when you get a chance, even if you have to watch it and stop it, finish this video, share this video. I really appreciate it. If you guys would like the, uh, like the video, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, subscribe and share this video because we definitely need to showcase more stories. Let this positive story trend. This young brother is on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And so, and with a family that supportive like this, a good support system, you know, trying to do it the right way, working hard, doubling his studies, carrying a 3.5 GPA, getting there, you know, working hard, uh, you know, so, you know, and creating, gener trying to create generational wealth. Okay. So share the story. Take the time to listen to positive stories. I know there's a lot of stories out there that are more entertaining when it comes to drama and negativity, but this is a very good story. And we need to share these type of stories because we don't get enough traction on positive stories for black families that's doing the right thing and that's uh, supportive with their children in their, their journey to success. So God bless you all on today. I will be back with other videos um, just to catch up on some stories, some unusual things, but God bless you all. Bye.